All right, y'all. So this topic right here, I feel like not too many people probably going to be interested in it because, you know what I'm saying, it's about boxing, but it's not about no boxing fights or no particular popular boxing. But these type of things, they interest me like a motherfucker. I don't know why I can't help it, but I always get drawn to when I see, you know, the people who had the promotional companies, you know what I'm saying, the people who do the business, who... Uh, 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 you know, make the cash flow, will make everything work. When, when, when they start speaking to a sense or, or shit start going on with them, I like, I like, I pay attention because I'm like, that's how, you know, I love the sport. You know what I'm saying? I, I love the the, 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 the magic that happens within the ring and the, and the, 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 the discipline and the, the IQ that's needed to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? But to make everything run too, man, that's, that addressed me too. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let me stop rapping. What I'm talking about, uh, this comes from BoxingScene.com. Uh, Bob Arum erupts over Eddie Hearn pushing forward with the Chavez Jr. fight. So, first and foremost, man, Eddie Hearn, I don't know if they do this, but Eddie Hearn is easily the promoter of the year. He's killed 2019. So, part of this, I'm like, Bob Arum's probably a little bit jealous. Cause Eddie Hearn be out here moving like he don't like he just he be moving like the Godfather man he be moving like a kingpin. I don't be like man fuck this guy. See what Earl need to do he need to do what like Eddie uh, Eddie Hearn pops did man. He obviously that's his son so it's easy to have somebody replace him when he get a little older. But I'm like Earl man, where your young gun at man? You need a young gun come at come come out of nowhere man. Like you know what I'm saying you gotta teach him all your shit. Cause you up there in age man so you need, you need a successor man. Come and go out of here. But anyways, uh, I got sidetracked. <clears throat> Eddie Hearn, man, 2019 promoter of the year, man. He been doing work, uh, but Bob Arum, he, he he's upset over the whole Chavez Jr. situation. And, and if y'all ain't been following the Chavez Jr. situation, December 20th, you know what I'm saying, my birthday. That's four days away, so I'm about to be having some dope to watch on my birthday. That's what's up. Uh, Danny Jacobs, man, he's fighting against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. A lot of people didn't know if this fight was going to happen because there was a lot of controversy, uh, a lot of uh, 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 date changes, and event. Excuse me. Venues being changed, and, and you know what I'm saying me personally, I was wondering what was going on. I, you know, everybody else in the community probably was too. I end up finding out. Excuse me again. I end up finding out. It had to do. That's crazy because I, I was just talking about drug testing in Vada. If y'all watched that video, it had to do with uh, random drug tests, right? Julio Caesar Chavez Jr. said he is not going to take any random drug tests when uh, the fight was initially announced because it was announced in uh, Las Vegas, I believe. And once again, y'all gotta remember this too, Eddie Hearn, he's trying to dip, he's trying to dabble a little bit in the US market because his UK market is popping, but the US market, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to make that crossover. And uh, I made a video about, man, this is all the game plan, man. This goes on forever. So I think all this shit can be a series because everything connects. This goes back to Bob Arum saying he's gonna do about 20 fights next year overseas. So he's trying to dabble overseas because he sees Eddie Hearn trying to dabble in the US market. Um, this even goes, this ties in with the Deontay Wilder being the B-side to Joshua because, you know what I'm saying, this goes to the Bob Arum saying, you know, he's, he's saying, look, look, this is his words. Hearn is in strong position in the UK where the fans really buy tickets, but he's feeling falling on his ass in the United States because he doesn't understand the market and says stupid things. And what he's doing now with Chavez, put himself at risk with the Nevada Commission is senseless. So I'll, I'll explain the last part he's talking about, but for the first part, that sounds like a lot of y'all US fans want to talk about the Wilder B-side situation uh, with Joshua being the A-side. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, obviously you in the US, you, I, you know what I'm saying? Wilder's one of my favorite, I, I love Wilder, right? But you just got to understand that the UK appreciates boxing much more than the US does. And Bob Arum realizes that. He ended up upsets him. I don't know if that's true. That's me talking out my ass. But <laughs> he's he's coming at Bob, um, excuse me, he's coming at Eddie Hearn because he's making a bold move. So going back to the Chavez Jr. Danny Jacobs situation, he didn't want to take a random drug test from the uh, Nevada uh, State Athletic Commission because he said, I never signed up for this. Like I was just talking about, if you want to sign up for random drug testing, all you got to do is sign the dotted line. If you don't sign the dotted line, you don't got to be randomly drug tested and you can still make big money and you can still be the main event of a fight. But I think that random Random drug testing had to do with Danny Jacobs probably saying something, but nonetheless, Hearn just went ahead and moved the event, right? Where he moved it to, and went to Arizona. So this is now coming from the the article. I'll read it a little bit. Then uh, 
uh, a Nevada State Athletic Commission warned her in that proceeding with the fight while Chavez remained in suspension, where she was suspended because he refused to take the, the random drug testing. That's what happens when you sign up for a fight. Uh, and you have to do random drug testing, but maybe you didn't read all the stipulations to the fight. Or maybe your promotional company or maybe your management team didn't tell you what needed to be done in order for this fight to occur in this particular place. Or maybe Eddie Hearn himself and his team wasn't aware that there was random drug testing by having a fight in Vegas. Like Bob Irm said, he says, said himself, Hearn seems to be falling on his ass in the U.S., like it seems to me in this particular uh, situation, it seems like Hearn's not. It seemed like he just wasn't aware of something. Maybe he, he thought there wasn't going to be any drug testing by doing this, but I don't know. That's all speculation, right? So, Chavez Jr. actually has filed a lawsuit against uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, attempted to overturn his suspension. I don't see how he's going to win that. That don't want to make any sense to me because I feel like they have every right. He's saying that because he wasn't aware of it, he uh, had every right to back out of it, but. Isn't that random drug testing where you don't know what's gonna happen, right? But then I also said, if you're gonna sign a contract, it has to be in the contract. So either he wasn't notified that it wasn't in the contract or it just wasn't in the contract. Well, then he has a case. But let's go back to the point at hand. Bob Earl being upset with Eddie Hearn because he's going on with the fight and he's basically jeopardizing or at the very least putting um, uh, uh, Julio C uh, Cesar Chavez Jr. Uh, uh, ability to ever fight in Las Vegas again at risk. Let's be real, y'all. Eddie Hearn don't care. I don't even think Chavez Jr. is signed under Eddie Hearn's team. Jacobs is. So why would he care? If his team is willing and, 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 and wanting to do this, I, I don't think that falls on Eddie Hearn, but that's my opinion. What do you guys think about that? Let me say this uh, last. This is a couple quotes from Bob Earl. There's a lot of quotes, actually. He said a lot. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to try and filter some of this out for you so you guys can get the summary of this. But this is why I feel like Bob Earl is a little bit salty about Eddie Hearn, right? And I think this is going to go into my next video. This is going to be my last video for the night because I got to make sure I edit these and put these out. So I'm not going to make too many videos. It's already long enough. But it's going to go into my next video talking about Bob Earl. <clears throat> uh, being more willing to work with uh, Al Heyman now. See, originally I thought maybe it was going to be the other way around. Bob Earl more willing to work with Eddie Hearn, but it seems like to me Eddie Hearn may be starting to rub folks the wrong way in the U.S. because he he's promoter of the year, man. So I'm, I'm going to go over this real quick. Hearn. Uh... Okay, excuse me. So this is what uh, Bob Arum told a group of reporters. Any promoter who tries to put on a fight with a fighter who was suspended by the commission of the United States should have his license taken away and not be allowed to promote. That's strong words. That's strong words. He's basically saying he shouldn't, well, he is saying that he shouldn't promote. He said, if we don't respect the laws and we don't respect the Muhammad Ali Act, then we have nothing. His excuse may be that he's out of the country, but he should know the rules. You don't take a fire who's suspended by the commission and then take him to another commission or anywhere else to get licensed. That's what the UFC did. Eddie Hearn taking notes from Dana White, right? You just don't do that or otherwise you destroy the sport. Wrong, in my opinion. If I'm if I'm wrong and he's right, then y'all let me know. Comment on that. A lot of fires take performance natural drugs and then clear the system by the press conference. So it's, if you wait until the press conference, you will miss that they took performance natural drugs. I agree with the insects and Nevada agent to Chavez camp at the wild card. The guy waited all day and Chavez refused to get tested. Now that's the grounds for suspicion. That's what the Nevada the commission did. We've heard a lot. We've, we've seen many people get suspended because of that very, very reason that uh, Chavez did that. So it's going to be hard to hold up that lawsuit. The only way that a lawsuit upholds is if in the contract it doesn't say there's random drug testing. So this is the last thing I'm going to say. He doesn't understand the laws in the United States totally in disregard. He's a guy who has operated under the British Boxing Board of Control, which we all know is different. You see how UCAD uh, operated and handled the Dillian White uh, situation. Um, if I do do a second part to the whole VADA drug testing thing, I may want to compare the VADA with the uh, UCAD uh, rules, stipulations, how they're different, because it seems like a lot of people believe that um, the same ruling bodies when it comes to drug testing rules over everything the same way there's a diff diff different promotional companies There's different ruling bodies when it comes to this drug testing. So I may do that But yeah, that's all I'm gonna do now man. I already did this video a little bit longer than I wanted to I always stay up y'all man and uh, influence, man. The way you see me